Russian President Vladimir Putin announced on October 22nd that though there was no immediate need for a Sino-Russian military alliance, the possibility couldn't be ruled out. The relationship between Russia and China has been growing in strength in recent years. The statement could be seen as a counter to the moves by US and NATO to put Russia on the back foot through economic sanctions and more assertive military maneuvers. Both China and Russia are wary of the perceived threat from the West. Since Russia took over Crimea in 2014, sanctions led by the US and supported by the UK, EU and other Western allies have tried to isolate Moscow by curbing its access to external finance, trade and diplomatic support. This has a significant impact on Russian economic health, which was already suffering from a lack of reforms, underinvestment as well as haphazard state ownership. Expansion of NATO through partial membership to Latin American states, such as Brazil and Colombia, which is a counter to Russia and strengthening of the anti-China quad, which includes the US, Japan, India and Australia, could have resulted in President Putin to give this statement. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. A quadcopter type drone has been used to deliver a small package to US Navy's Ohio class ballistic missile submarine USS Henry M. Jackson as it sailed on the surface of the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. As per the US Navy, this replenishment was done on October 19, 2020, though no details regarding the package were provided. A caption for one of the pictures that the Navy released of the event stated, Underway replenishment sustains the fleet anywhere, anytime. This event was designed to test and evaluate the tactics, techniques and procedures of US Strategic Command's expeditionary logistics and enhance the overall readiness of our strategic forces. As indicated, this particular undertaking was designed to validate different aspects of how drones could be utilized in the future for at-sea replenishment. Viewers may note that Ohio-class submarines are the backbone of U.S. undersea nuclear deterrence. Being nuclear-powered, they have unlimited range and endurance, limited mainly by food supplies. So if drones could be used to reload the food items, it will greatly improve operational flexibility. Trump administration's National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien has stated that the plan is to integrate hypersonic missiles onto all U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. Defense News was the first to report on O'Brien's remarks, which he gave during a visit to Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Maine on October 21, 2020. Currently, the U.S. Navy has 58 Arleigh Burke-class ships in service, including Flight 1, 2 and 2A sub-variants. More than 12 additional ships in this class, including more 2As, as well as Flight 3 types which have enhanced capabilities, are already on order and are under construction. O'Brien said in his prepared remarks, according to Defense News, the Navy's conventional prompt start program will provide hypersonic missile capability to hold targets at risk from longer ranges. This capability will be deployed first on our newer Virginia-class submarines and the Zumwalt-class destroyers. Eventually, all three flights of the Arleigh Burke-class destroyers will field this capability. Russia has reportedly restarted testing of its 9M-730 Burevestnik nuclear-powered cruise missile, codenamed SSC-X9 Skyfall by NATO. 
As per recent satellite imagery, Novaya Zemlya, an archipelago above the Arctic Circle, appears to be serving as a central testing ground for the new missile. Viewers may note that Burevestnik was one of the several new weapons first mentioned by Russian President Putin on March 1, 2018 in his State of the Nation address before Russian lawmakers and other senior government officials. Regarding the Burevestnik, Vladimir Putin noted that in late 2017, Russia successfully launched its latest nuclear-powered missile at the Central Training Ground. He added that during its flight, the nuclear-powered engine reached its design capacity and provided the necessary propulsion. He additionally claimed that the missile's range was unlimited and that it could maneuver for as long as necessary. Burevestnik is unique since it uses a nuclear reactor to power its propulsion system and could remain in the air for an almost unlimited amount of time, giving it limitless range. It also makes it invulnerable to being taken out on the ground. It's interesting to note that the U.S. has strongly discouraged Russia from going ahead with this program. The Chinese Defense Ministry stated that the Indian Army on Wednesday handed over a Chinese soldier who was apprehended in eastern Ladakh to China's People's Liberation Army PLA. The soldier was caught by the Indian Army in the Demchak sector of eastern Ladakh on Monday after he had strayed across the Line of Actual Control, or LAC. Senior Colonel Zhang Shuli, spokesperson for the Western Theater Command of the PLA, had earlier said in a statement, China hopes that India will hand over soon the Chinese soldier who got lost in China-India border areas on the evening of October 18 when helping local herdsmen retrieve a yak at their request. The Indian Army had stated that the soldier, a corporal in the Chinese People's Liberation Army PLA, has been identified as Wang Ya Long and he will be returned to the Chinese military at the Chushul Moldo border point after completion of formalities. This comes at a time when Indochina relationship is grappling with simmering tension after the recent clashes, and there's massive deployment of troops by the two militaries in the region. The de facto border between China and India is the Line of Actual Control, or LAC, and both countries have a difference in perception of the actual alignment at nearly 14 different points. The situation worsened when on June 15 the PLA ambushed and killed Indian soldiers patrolling Ladakh's Galwan Valley. Indian Army retaliated, which led to the deaths of numerous Chinese troops. USS Zumwalt stealth destroyer has live fired a standard missile 2 or SM2 for the first time. The Zumwalt class ships are set to be equipped with a unique variant of the SM2, also known as the SM2 Block 3AZ. As per an official US Navy release, Zumwalt fired the SM2 from one of its Mark 57 vertical launch system VLS arrays while on the Naval Air Weapons Center Weapons Division Sea Test Range off the coast of Southern California near Point Mugu. The U.S. Navy said that the missile successfully intercepted a surrogate for an anti-ship cruise missile. Details on the nature of the mock target were not provided. Viewers may note that the service uses various target drones to simulate subsonic and supersonic cruise missiles. U.S. Navy Captain Matt Schroeder, the DDG-1000 program manager, said in a statement, Today's successful test not only demonstrates the ship's capability to fire missiles and conduct self-defense, it's also a significant step towards more advanced combat system testing and operations for our Navy's most technically innovative warship. The USS Zumwalt crew and Surface Development Squadron 1 are working hand-in-hand -hand with the acquisition community to advance the ship's operational capability. Zumwalt class has 80 Mark 57 cells, which could accommodate SM-2 Block 3AZ missile, apart from the fact that these cells could quad-pack RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow missile ESSM. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.